Hi everyone. So I thought this week I'd finish off this little mini series of talking about three notes per string scales by focusing on the melodic minor. Now I'm going to take the same approach that I've taken with my previous videos where I, I start by identifying some fragments, some groupings of strings and notes and then use that grouping of strings and notes to construct all of the scales going up the neck. Now I talk about this in de detail in my deep dive series where I, I build the three notes per string major scale stripes. And if, you, if you're not aware of this approach, then that's a really good place to start. So I'd check those videos out. What I'd do as well is I'll, I'll attach a PDF to this video so you can download that and that has all the charts drawn out on it already so you can use those. But really what I want to do is to give you the tools so you don't need to use the charts. Really, you've only got three groups of strings to memorize, three fragments of notes, as, as you'll see. And once you've got those, you've got everything that you need to construct all of the scales going up the neck. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that the melodic minor scale is, is almost identical to the major scale. In fact, there's only one note that's different, and that's the third of the melodic minor is, is flattened, so you're playing a minor third rather than a major third. And, and the other six notes are identical to the major scale. So what, what I'll do is I'll start by identifying the three major scale fragments that I've used in my previous videos, and then I'll show you how to modify those to make three melodic minor scale fragments. And then later on in the video, I'll show you how we use those to construct the scales going up the neck. So let's start with the, the fragments. Okay, so we're going to start with the major scale. Start with the three fragments that I've spoken about in previous videos associated with the major scale. And we're going to turn them into melodic minor fragments. So the first fragment of the major scale that I speak about is this one. Which is three strings containing three notes that are a tone apart. Hopefully you can see that. And the, the root note of the major scale is always there. It's always the first note on the second string of those three groups of three. Just there. And like I've said before, the melodic minor is basically the major scale with a, a flattened third. So the third is just here, so we play a flattened note, but all of the other notes are the same, which turns fragmented to this shape. So just playing from the root, we'd have... And there's our root note. Okay. Now the second fragment of the major scale looks like this. So it's a semitone, tone, semitone, tone on two consecutive strings. And in this fragment, the root note of the major scale is always the second note of the lower string. So it sounds like this from the root. And again, we flatten the third and the third is the first note on the second string, so that gives us this shape. Okay. And the third fragment of the major scale looks like this. So it's a tone, semitone, tone, semitone. And the root note of this fragment is always that third note of a lower string. So from the root note, it sounds like this. And in this fragment, the third is just there. It's the middle note of the, the second string. So we flatten that, and that gives us this fragment. three fragments, those are the only three fragments that we need in order to create all of the melodic minor scales going all the way up the neck. So once you've got those memorized, the, the next thing you need to memorize is that they're just used in order. They, they keep cycling around in the order, the first fragment, second fragment, third fragment, and back to first, second, third, first, second, third. 
and each of the scale shapes going up the neck, each of the scale positions, are just those three fragments just cycling round and round, as you'll see when I start to build the scales out of them. The other thing that may catch you out is uh, the quirk of the tuning of the guitar, because you've got that major third tuning between the G and the B strings, and every other string is tuned to a perfect fourth. And what that means is when you're moving between the G and the B string, you have to move, move your hand up a fret to compensate for that change in tuning. So what I thought I'd do is I'll focus purely on the melodic minor scale fragments, start in G minor and work my way all the way up in the neck showing you how I construct these from scratch. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is give you a few tricks that will allow you to work out every position going up the neck without having the charts written out in front of you or anything like that. I'll, I'll still produce a PDF so you've got something to refer to, but it, so long as you've got those three fragments memorized, you should have all the information you need to be able to construct the melodic minor scales going all the way up the neck. So I'm gonna do this in G minor, G melodic minor. So there's my root note, third fret of the E string. Now, when the root note falls on your index finger, if you look at the three fragments, you can see that that happens only in the first shape, the first fragment. So we can construct the first two strings from that first fragment as that's the middle string of the first fragment. So it looks like this. Now the next rule is that the fragments are always used when you ascend, that you'll always play the first fragment, then the second fragment, then the third fragment, and then it'll wrap round to the first, second, third, first, second, third. So I've just finished the first fragment, and so I move on to the second fragment, which looks like this. Okay. And now the, the one other rule to be aware of is because of the, how the guitar is tuned between the G and the B strings, you have to put a little one fret kink in the, in the shapes as you move between the, the G and the B string. So we've just finished our second fragment. Moving on to the third fragment we play. And that takes me all the way across the neck with that third fragment. Okay, so another little trick that we can take advantage of is that these shapes, the three notes per string scale shapes, tend to move diagonally. And you find that the pattern you finish on on the top E is the same pattern that you start the next position with as you move up the neck on the low E. Which means that you can just copy that shape, put it down on the low E, and you're, you're all ready to start the next position going up. Now we already know that those three notes were the, the three notes from the, the last string of the third fragment. So that's the last string of the third fragment. And following that is the first fragment. And following that is the second fragment. And that gives second position of the G melodic minor. Okay, so we can take that same idea again. We finished with the second string of the second position, if you remember, so we, let's move that down onto the low E and start constructing from there. So this is the last string of the second position. So third position looks like this, third fragment, and then wrap round to first fragment. And that gives our third position of the melodic minor. Okay, so our third position finished with the last string of the, thir of the first fragment, if you remember. So we take that idea again and play it on the low E. And this gives us our starting notes for the next, next uh, shape up. So it's starting with the last string of the first fragment, moving on to the second fragment, to the third fragment, to the first fragment. Okay, so the fifth position of the melodic minor then. So just like before, 
We take that last string that we played in the fourth position and we move it across to the bottom E. And this is the first string of the first fragment, so we just play that out. To the second fragment. To the third fragment. One string of that. And that gives us our fifth position. So the sixth position then. We take that last string that we played, moved it across onto low E, and that gives us our starting string on the low E. And this is the uh, first string of the third fragment, if you remember. So do third fragment, and then back wrap round to first fragment, and up to the second fragment. So finally the seventh position now, and this time we start with the second fragment, yeah, wrap round to the third fragment, and then the first fragment. And that's the seventh position, and then we're back to the root position again for the G melodic minor. So that's it. Now I consider this a mnemonic technique. The purpose of this is to give you some tools to, to help you in memorizing these shapes so you don't have to keep referring to charts. As I say, I've attached the charts to these anyway to this video just to give you something to look at. And in those charts, I've put all three sets of fragments as well so you can see the major scales, major scale fragments, you can see the melodic minor scales, you can see the melodic minor scale fragments and see how they they look when you compare one set against the other. The other thing I find is that with me being playing predominantly rock and blues, I've, I rarely use the melodic minor. So I find this a really good way of bringing back those scale shapes when I've not used them for a long time. So I, I do actually use this and I do find myself coming back to this in order to remind myself how to play over a position. So that they're a really good sort of trigger to bring back the shapes as well. So I'd, I'd recommend learning this technique if that's, even if you already know the scale shapes, then this is actually a useful little trigger to remind you what a particular scale pattern looks like, a particular position looks like if you've not used it for a while. Anyway, experiment with the technique, see how you get on. I will chat next time. Goodbye.